What's going on, everyone? GM to all of you out there in Olympus land. It's Kairos with another video on Ohm. And this one, I think, is going to be one that the community really appreciates. For those of you that have been sharing your uh, desire to get a little closer look at my spreadsheet, um, perhaps have a copy of it to use yourself, I think you'll be happy after I post this video because I will include a link to a copyable version uh, in the description of the video. Uh, I'll post it on Discord and uh, in the video I'll give you a walkthrough of how to update it each day, what things you can do with it, uh, and one cool other aspect of the sheet is I've made a really nice update to it for those of you that are choosing to do the 9-9 strategy. Whether you are or you aren't, doesn't matter. The sheet will work just fine. But if you do decide to 9-9, um, that is use the Rari Fuse Pool to lever up your S-Ohm, then you, I think, will be a happy man or gal um, because there is an integrated column in the sheet to help you uh, monitor, manage that position. So, before we get to that, I just need to give a shout out. Um, Bike for Peace, bikeforpeace.eu, Alexandros, currently biking all the way down the, uh, the <laughs> most of the Western Hemisphere, biking from uh, Mexico all the way down the, uh, the West Coast of South America to Patagonia. Um, Boy, many, 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 many thousands of miles, kilometers, sorry, for most of the Omis, I think we've got a lot of uh, <laughs> metric users, not the imperial uh, barbarians like over here in the United States. So yes, kilometers, many thousands of kilometers, apologies. But uh, yeah, this guy, very inspirational poster, very awesome poster on the Discord, but he's doing something real. Um, and, uh, I'm so impressed by what he's doing and I'm, I'm so inspired by the messages he's left me that my videos have inspired him. That is just so humbling. Um, that's just so cool. And so giving him a shout out, check his content out, bikeforpeace.eu. That's bike no, number four peace.eu. And, uh, he shared this article in, uh, off topic on who pays Alexandros. And he's encouraging me to put a link to accept tips, some, you know, maybe S-Ohm tips, who knows, my Ether wallet address um, in my videos. So maybe I'll do that, I don't know. I just like making these mostly for me to talk through what's on my mind. But uh, yeah, you know, maybe if, uh, if you're willing and you wanna throw me like a tiny little Nugget of appreciation, I would be happy, um, but no pressure. That's not what I'm doing this for. Um, but Alexandros, you know, he's the one that you should be tipping because he's doing some real shit that um, I can't even compare to. I mean, this is amazing. So anyways, uh, give his stuff a check. Uh, with that said, going over to the Olympus website, you can see that price is 333. Oh, yeah. Moving back up. Price doesn't matter, as I always say. But, hey, listen, it's all good. I'm not going to be crying if the price <laughs> goes up. Uh, and I love it when it's 333. Maybe we can just keep it like that forever. I don't know. Um, <laughs> market cap is over 500 million. Nice sight to see it. the market cap getting back over 500 mil. And the circulating total supply continues to go up which is good, you know, showing that more people are staking, adopting the protocol, um, buying in. And as you can see, with total supply nearing 2 million, you know, here, I guess sometime in the month of September, uh, that then brings me to the snapshot page, the Olympus Dow snapshot page, which is where we vote on the OIPs the Olympus improvement proposals, the 
policy team works very hard. Um, the Dow works very hard to continuously improve Ohm, improve the Dow, improve the protocol. And so um, in classic governance, you know, DeFi crypto governance fashion, holders of the token can vote for the OIPs. So as you can see, we've got a couple new ones up here, the policy framework, um, the audit for critical contracts. Um, those are two important uh, proposals. Number 23 is certainly important because we're uh, trying to make sure that our contracts are audited and are um, at low to no risk of being hacked. Um, so any amount of money, you know, perhaps even in the seven figures is worth uh, the investment. So the audit is key. Uh, I haven't clicked through this yet really to review it, um, but I think uh, allocated 200K of the Dow funds for the audit. Okay, so <laughs> I said seven figures. I know that sometimes audits can cost over a million dollars, uh, but yeah, $200,000 for the audit. My goodness, like, why not? Absolutely. Um, the policy framework, uh, this seems like more of a read, I guess. I'll have to review that, but um, so far, <laughs> as is the case, like always, 100% approval. Um, but yeah, like one of the ones that you should really look at, for those of you that are new, um, and by the way, snapshot.org, and then you search for Olympus and enter. Um, for those of you that are new, really... You want to make sure you read through this proposal. Um, reason is because it, it it really like lays out how the evolution of the APY will occur. And so um, if we go here, I'll zoom in a bit. You can see that this proposal included a framework for how the reward rate reduction will take place, how it will affect APY, and it's based off of the ohm total supply. So as I showed you here, we have 1.8 million ohm total. And ohm is minted um, you know, every day, all throughout the day. Ohm is minted. Um, Man, I, always, I haven't thought about this in a while, but I think it's minted every time somebody bonds. Um, like one ohm is minted for every die taken in. I think, I can't remember, man. Honestly, I can't. That's bad. Um, you know, I'm well past the point of like doing my due diligence to research the protocol. That was like a couple months ago. So I'm like a, a true cult member now at this point, but... Uh, yeah, so you can see that once we reach 10 million total supply, that's when that will kick in the next vote uh, to move to the next tier of APY, which is 500 to 1,000 percent. That would last from 10 million to 100 million. So when 10 million, W-E-N, 10 million, I don't know. Um, you know, we got to a million, uh, in what, like April, May, June, July, August, like maybe uh, five months, little, I mean, less than five months for sure. I can't even remember. What was it like early August? Anyways, the point is, is we probably have several more months until we get to 10 million. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll get there before the end of the year. But you can see that as we go up, 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 up in total supply, the APY would go down, 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 down. And that's okay because as total supply goes up, the scarcity of APY goes up, meaning that APY in terms of ohm is a commodity in itself you know, is an asset in itself, like access to that APY, and it is becoming more scarce. And so as 
the protocol grows and becomes more popular. You know, the truth is, is us DGENs, we're worried about, oh my gosh, 8,000%. Like it was just 20,000% a couple months ago, right? Like, wah, you know, and it does sting. Like I would love to be getting 20,000% APY or 80,000% APY. Those were the days, man, that was awesome, but it's not going to happen. And the truth is, right, normie people, regular TradFi, you know, regular plain old people, when they first take a glance at 800% APY, they're like, whoa, 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 that's a Ponzi. And they see 8,000% APY, whoa, 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 that's a Ponzi. 80,000 Ponzi, 800,000, oh my gosh. But 800% APY, right? Like even if you were just getting into Ohm at that point, that's still an amazing return. Now I've said it before, and I'll say it again, the APY, that number, that metric APY is, I believe, kind of a, a meme. Um, it's, it's, its intent is to market Ohm and drive up attention because the truth is, is that the APY is fleeting. It's only going to last for a moment, so to speak. The thing that you need to pay attention to is the, um, the yield per uh, epoch per rebase. And so if we go over here, you know, that 0 0.4017, you know, or the five day rate 6.19, like those are better for you to look at, I think. Um, focus more on the short term if you're worried about like tracking your returns. Because to expect 8,000% APY to last even a month or six weeks, it's just not likely because it's just designed to not work that way. Look, we're even down below 8,000 at this point. My gosh, the horror. So anyways, uh, go through that scatter shot or snapshot rather. Uh, just kind of look and research a bit on what we've been voting on. You know, it's important to be engaged in this fashion as well. All right, let's get to the good stuff. I don't know how many minutes in we are. I'll put it in the uh, description for those of you that just want to get to the good stuff. Um, so, got this sheet here. I made a copy of it and prepared it a little bit um, so I can show you how it works. It's called For the Omis. And I want to first just kind of explain how it works, you know, what I've updated from the last time I went through this sheet more, uh, you know, uh, deliberately. And then I'll show you how to update it each day or every couple days, whatever. And then we'll close out. So the sheet here, just going uh, left to right, we've got the five day rebase. Um, Anytime in green, you see in green, that means you can change it, not this green. Um, anything in green, you know, you'll see over here uh, that you can change it. And I need to change that to blue, I just realized. All right. Uh, is it? No, I can't remember. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this needs to be blue. real-time stuff here, folks. And this one needs to be blue. All right, cool, sorry. So anytime you log into the sheet, the first thing you wanna do is update the date. So we'll just go nine, six. Sorry, this is Marika, and so I don't have it six, nine. Nice. Um, September 6, 2021. And all the dates below automatically update. Uh, you can see that they're in five day increments. That's because everything on this sheet is done through the five day rebase lens. Anything in blue up here, that means that there's a formula. So you just don't wanna change anything in these columns. The only column that you're going to change anything is columns D, the fuse loan balance, and column F, Ohm staked. So this cell here, you can change. And this cell here, 
you can change. Okay? So this column here, B, gives you the ohm per rebase. How many ohm are you making per rebase? Column C is US dollars per rebase. So based on the current ohm price, which is here in, uh, in a W2, it will take that number and uh, and multiply it by this number and give you um, the USD per rebase. I think that's what it is, or whatever the formula is I have. I don't know. I like get in the zone and I make these things. I don't even remember what I did from the beginning. Uh, but yeah, this automatically calculates your USD per rebase. Um, as I said, the fuse loan balance will get there in a minute. Your liquidation price will get there in a minute once we enter in a fuse loan balance. Ohm staked, uh, so 100. Uh, and so this here is the only cell you need to update. USD value, this is the USD value of your Ohm staked. So current price times number of Ohm staked. The net value is the USD value minus the fuse loan balance. So if you have a fuse loan, you need to pay it back. So this gives you your net value, the profit that you'll make um, minus your fuse loan balance that you owe. Uh, 20x premium. This assumes that Ohm is trading at a 20x premium over its intrinsic value. So if you look at column R2, um, the intrinsic value, right, the one-to-one -one risk free value per ohm is $27.23. Um, and that still needs to be updated, and we'll get there in a minute. But this is the intrinsic value. And so 20x premium, 8x premium, and 3x premium are just simply this number multiplied by whatever that multiple is. So in column I, this is $27.23 times 20. This would be, if Ohm was trading at this moment at 544.60, this would mean that it's trading 20x over its intrinsic value. And that would imply like a major um, bubbly, hysteria, frothy period of Ohm. It's a very high premium for Ohm. In recent history and certainly in the future and so it's nice to know when things are getting very frothy um, at that given moment based on what the intrinsic value is at that time 8x premium I think is a healthy premium it's certainly lower than the current premium of about 12 but I think that as time goes on and the protocol matures a bit, 8x seems, as of now, uh, healthy. And you can change this if you want. I mean, you just go in here and you change 8 to, you know, 4.2069. And then you just click on this, hover over the blue square here, and then just drag it down and apply that formula to everything. Now you have 42069 premium if that's what you would prefer. But I just, you know, I picked eight randomly. Seems reasonable. And then 3x premium, I think, is a very conservative floor. I don't think, and this may be optimistic, I don't know, but I don't think that Ohm is going to drop to its one-to-one -one intrinsic value anytime soon maybe in the distant future, you know, maybe when we have billions and billions of ohm total supply, who knows. But I think that like right now, a 3x premium is a really good floor. Um, and it's a good way to mentally prepare yourself for the future of like what your personal floor could be. And so um, that's the 3x premium. And then, um, as I said, you have the intrinsic value. Again, all three of these, including the intrinsic value, have the net value um, 
So what is your uh, USD profit, your net value, minus your fuse loan, and we'll see that this is going to change when I put a fuse loan balance in. All right. Um, column V, column V is the rebase rate. And remember, this is the five-day rebase rate. And so what is the five-day rebase rate right now? 6.1986%. 6.1986%. So 1.06198%. So it's updated the current price of ohm. We can refresh and we can see that the current price of ohm is 333.21. Three, three, so we will update that 333.21. Three, three, you can see also the runway available. And so the current runway, if we click through that link for this reward rate is 346 days, three, four, six. And it tells you the exact date that the runway would run out. By the way, the runway won't run out like on that date. It's a moving target. See my runway video. Um, so I highlight in green where the runway goes to and it's almost an entire year. <clears throat> and the runway is for the reward rate, not the APY. I don't look at the APY um, uh, runway. I look at the reward rate runway. Um, my index. So all that my index does is tells you um, your personal index. So this index here doesn't apply to like any of us. I mean, maybe a tiny percentage of people, like less than 1%, less than a half a per, I don't even know, like dozens of people, <laughs> I don't know, um, got in at Genesis. So nobody really has a 14.9 ohm index at this point. But we do have our personal index. So every time you update your current ohm stake balance, let's say that right now you had 120 ohm, your index would be 1.2. And then, because that means that you have 1.2 ohm for the original ohm that you bought. And then you have your index adjusted purchase price. So as your stack goes up, 140, your index adjusted purchase price goes down. If you bought your own at $330 and you bought 100 and now you have 140, that would be as if you bought your 100 ohm at $236. So that's just a nice other way to look at your progress you're making. The median premium this just calculates the median premium on this sheet every time the median is updated, or uh, the <clears throat> this sheet is updated. So I'll show you how to update this in a minute. But it's just nice to know uh, what the median premium is, uh, the current premium. So this just updates whenever you enter in the current risk-free value per ohm, and then whenever you uh, change the ohm price. And then <clears throat> how far is ohm from the median? So it just kind of shows you like how much closer we're getting to the median premium, which is nice to know like if ohm is um, cheap or expensive relative to the median premium. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. Ah, good. Wonderful. Um, Risk-free value per ohm per day. So ohm goes up in risk-free value per ohm, eight cents a day. That's calculated through the sheet. It's just a simple average. Um, and then of course, as I said, the risk-free value per ohm, we'll get there in a minute. Um, and then the last thing on this sheet here is your transactions. So we're gonna pretend that we bought 100 ohm today. Um, $330 purchase price, 
uh, and we paid fifty dollars in gas. We bought a hundred ohm, so our total cost was thirty three thousand fifty dollars. It was a market buy, and so our cost basis is three thirty fifty. Why three thirty fifty? Why not three hundred thirty? Because of the gas fees. Okay, so we have to factor in our gas fees. So if for whatever reason you were impatient and you wanted to buy and stake your own uh, when gas was like 300 guay, when some profile picture mint drop was happening and you paid 200, it would change your cost basis to 332. Um, and if you have a large stack, if you're playing with a large stack, then you know $200 in gas should be negligible. I mean, it's really not that big of a deal at this point. Um, but then, obviously, if you have a smaller stack, um, $200 in gas for buying 10 ohm at 330 would change your cost basis from 330 to 350 So be wary of gas being high if you have a smaller stack. So we're going to pretend that that is intact, and we're going to change this back to 100 you can see that these automatically calculate to reflect your cost basis. So let's say that you wanted to buy tomorrow another 100 ohm uh, and you bought it for, let's say it's 340 tomorrow and you paid $70 in gas. Now your cost basis is 335.60, you have 200 ohm. Um, and then of course you would go over here and you would update it with whatever it is. Um, how do you get your current ohm? You just look at what you have right here, or you go to Fuse and look at what you have on there, and you update it. But we didn't do this. We're going to get this out of here. Um, and we'll get this. Let's go ahead and update the RFV per ohm data sheet. So today is September 6th, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a row. We're going to highlight that data, hover over the blue box, and just drag down one. We have nine, six. Everything is at zero, zero, zero UTC. So first thing we have to update, we only have to update two things. We only have to update the RFV per ohm at that time on that date, and then the open price for ohm at that time on that date. So first thing we're going to do is click on this link where date is linked. You see it's blue. We'll click through there. It takes us to Dune Analytics. And we'll go to Query Results. And then we're going to take $27.23. And i got to update this one. $27.23. All right make sure your previous day is accurate because it might change a little bit over the course of the day but anything from two days prior is all locked in so 9-4 should be 27-21 and we're good all right so we got that the next thing we need is to update the open price and so we're going to open that link we're going to go to query results and we're going to find nine six at zero o'clock and we'll copy this 326 and change and we'll control shift v or command shift v paste it right here so that it pastes it without formatting and we're done uh, we're at back at 12x premium all of these charts are automatically updating every time that we um, update down here we're going to copy 2723 and we're going to go over here. Oh, it's already there, but we'll paste it there to update that one. And now the sheet's all updated. Uh, everything is ready to rock and roll. Um, by the way, for the verse ETH thing, uh, just real quick, this is the uh, current ETH price. This is the current, uh, the current, uh, value of your ohm so 100 ohm is worth that at this moment and then this is how much ETH you could buy with $33,321 you could buy 8.5 ETH 
And so um, it's nice to know if you had that much ETH, how much would it be worth at a certain price? So if ETH was $10,000 per ETH, then your 8.5143 blah, blah, blah would be worth $85,143.73. If ETH was $4,500, just broke the all-time high, it'd be worth 38314 and so it's nice to know what the trade-off is of having ohm or having ETH. Because if you think that your ohm stack will be worth $200,000 um, in this scenario, in let's say like December, okay, and ETH had a blow-off top at the end of the year and got to 20000 your ohm stack would still outperform ETH. Um, because the 8.5 ETH you bought today, if you sold all your own, would be worth at 20,000, 170,000, which is, last time I checked, less than 200,000. So I'm not saying that ohm will be worth 200,000. I'm saying just pretend that you thought that it would be at that point in time, your stack of ohm, then it makes more sense for you to have ohm in this scenario. So this is just a quick, simple like very primitive tool for you to um, run through some scenarios of like, well, why don't I just hold ETH? Well, I don't know, like why don't you look into it a little bit? All right, so let's talk about this sheet. What are we doing here? <clears throat> so let's say again that you have bought 100 ohm today. Today is September 6th, you bought 100 ohm and it's worth this. And then let's say you went and you stuck that ohm right into Fuse, okay? You stuck it right into Fuse. Well, first of all, you're gonna want to include a transaction for gas. So we're going to do this. We're gonna say nine, six, and we didn't buy any ohm, um, but we did pay gas and that was like $250, okay? So yeah, you do need to include the gas fees when they get to that level. I mean, if you're paying like $5 in gas, like who cares? But $250 in gas to spin up your fuse pool, definitely. So now your cost basis is higher. Now it's $333. But you deposited all your own uh, fuse pool gas fees. All right. And you got your 100 ohm in there. And now you want to take out a loan. And so you can take up to 75% of your USD value. And so the USD value of 33, so let's see. Three times 0.76, so you could take up to $25,324. We don't want to do that. Um, so let's say we take $10,000. And now this is assuming that you don't have your ohm in the pool again, okay? So if you bought 10,000 ohm, or $10,000, uh, you got a $10,000 loan, and then you immediately went and bought Ohm, and then you put it back into the pool, 10,000 divided by 333, you could have bought 30 Ohm, okay? So let's say that now you took the 30 Ohm that you bought with this $10,000 and you put it back into the fuse pool. And so now you have 130 Ohm staked. So now your liquidation price is $101. Why? Because the formula for liquidation price is the amount of money that you borrowed, 10,000, divided by 0.76, the LTV limit, right? 76% LTV limit in Tetranodes fuse pool. This is all Tetranodes fuse pool, by the way. Um, you would have to change this to 0.33 if you use the uh, Olympus pool party pool. Um, divided by uh, the number of ohms staked, in this case 130. So if you took 
that $10,000 loan and you went and bought some NFT or something with it, you did something else with it, you didn't put it back into the fuse pool, then you would still only have 100 in there. And you could see your liquidation price goes from 101 to 132. Um, let's say you got a little more feisty and you got a $15,000 loan, okay? And you didn't put it back in the pool, then your liquidation price is 197. 15,000 divided by $333 ohm would have bought you 45 ohm. So 145 is a $136 liquidation price. And if we go to trading view, remember we, where's Olympus? We love to have liquidation prices, ooh, free alpha. <laughs> We love to have liquidation prices that are below the all-time low. That just makes us sleep better at night. So a 136 liquidation price is about 16% below the all-time low. Um, a 196 one would be 12% below the local low of 225. So that's just a personal choice that you have to determine what is most appropriate for you in your situation. But I definitely think a liquidation price that's below like 160 makes a lot of sense. But keep in mind that your liquidation price is gonna go down because as time goes on, your ohm stack grows and that loan balance becomes less and less of a share of your, um, of your uh, balance in the fuse pool, right? So today, you do the $15,000 loan, you get your 45 ohm, you put it back into the pool. Your liquidation price is 136. So the USD value of your collateral in the pool, your 145 ohm, is $48,315. But in five days, the value, if the price stays the same, will be $51,000. And then in 10 days, if the price stayed the same, it would be 54,000. Now, yeah, your fuse loan balance goes up because you're paying interest on it. And I calculated um, that you're paying uh, 0.82% interest every five days. Um, and I did that based on a 60%, I think, APR or 50% APR. Um, I got overestimated, I think, a little bit of how much interest you would pay just to be safe. But you could see that even though your fuse blown balance, like from September to December, so what is that, September, October, November, three months, your fuse loan balance goes up three hundred seventy or two thousand three hundred seventy five dollars. Like, oh my god, holy shit! My balance went up two thousand three hundred seventy five dollars. That's a lot of interest. Yeah, right. But your own balance went up almost a hundred thousand dollars if the price stayed the same. If the price went down and it went to the eight x premium, it would be a hundred eighteen thousand. Take out your fuse loan balance and your net value is $100,000. So you can run through all these little iterations of like things that you would do. Um, I also have here the net value like for the 3x premium and then the intrinsic value uh, is yellow. What does that mean? That means that uh, you are in a point where you're probably gonna get liquidated uh, if the, not probably, you're certainly going to get liquidated if the price dropped to that level. But eventually you reach a price, a point where um, you're safe, even if the price went down to those levels. So this is just a nice little visual here for you to see like, wow, you know, 
um, I really am safe with this fused loan um, under this hypothetical circumstance. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, I don't know what else. Um, remember, like, to update this here if you want to uh, project outward. Um, there's two ways to project outward. Like, I would like to know how much ohm I'll have in April of 2022, okay? But you're not going to have 1,812, okay? You will not. Why? Because... The five-day rebase rate is not going to be 6.2% at that point. Um, it's going to be much less. What will it be? I have no clue. Um, let's just say it is 4.8%. Okay. Um, this is an inexact way to do it because then it assumes that all of these are also 4.8%. Okay. So that's not a good way to do it. Uh, one way to do it is I just like to divide it by three or by four or by five um, as a very rough way to do it. I'm sure that there's another OMI that has a more exact way to do it, but what do I mean? So let's say that you want to predict how much OM you'll have in January, okay? So one way that you can do that um, is you can just be really conservative and divide this in half. So instead of 614, you'll have 300, you know, or 400, you know, maybe you make it two thirds of this and you'll have 400. Um, or maybe how much owned will I have in March? And then you could divide that in half. And instead of 1400, you'll have 700. Or how much ohm will I have in August? Um, you could divide this by five. And so 8655, divided by five is 1,731. Uh, so there's different ways to do this, uh, but you really have to be honest with yourself. And if you, and, you know, and if I figure out a better way to display that on this sheet, then I will. I don't have that right now. Um, but you just gotta be honest with yourself, folks. Like in August of 2022, if you start with 145 SOM today on August, September 6, 2021, you will not, you will not have even close to 9,000 ohm. You won't. You just won't. Maybe 2,000. I don't know. Maybe I'm underestimating. Maybe 3,000. Maybe a third of it. You just got to be honest with yourself. But 3,000 ohm at $333 per ohm is still worth a million dollars. So, you know. Now, yeah, a million dollars is a lot less than $3 million, but here's the thing. Don't forget that it grows exponentially. So if you have 3,000 at that point, uh, just a month later, you already have uh, 3,600 almost, um, roughly. I don't know, maybe not that much because it still has the original interest rate, uh, yield rate. My point is, is that you will get to $3 million. It'll just take you a bit longer. So maybe instead of August, you'll have $3 million at $333 per ohm. Maybe in January of 2023, you'll have $3 million. All that matters is time. A lot of new OMIs have to remember that it's not that you won't ever get to this number. It just will take longer. And so your asset, your luxury is time. It's not really money. It's not really how much money do you have. Like you need to be able to have enough money to buy, own, pay gas and get it staked. But then all you need is time. All you need is time. All you need is time. If you put one ohm in today and you don't have a fuse balance, in one year you'll have 63. And if you divide it by three, you'll have 20. And you've just turned in one year, $333 into $6,700. Come on, guys. It's time. All right. So with that said, I'm done. I hope this video helps. I hope you enjoy playing with this sheet. I'm just going to leave it as it is in this very moment. I hope you all have a great day. 3-3. Three, three. Peace.